Welcome to Africa Media Australia. I'm Claude Shawadi. Thank you very much for watching this video. Earlier this year, uh, a young man from um, African background was uh, murdered inside Port Phillip Prison here in Melbourne. He was only 23 years old. Hassan Jang was his name. And uh, uh, we thought we were trying to find a bit more uh, about this story because so far not much has come through except that uh, he was murdered inside the prison. Now the coroner is still investigating the whole thing, but we are now talking to Hassan's mother who agreed to uh, talk to us and tell us a bit more about uh, Hassan and she's got a lot of questions about uh, what took place. She's waiting for answers from uh, the coroner, from uh, Victoria Police and the government. So I have with me today Miss Hannah Collier. Um, Miss uh, Collier, thank you very much for agreeing to talk to us. We understand this is obviously a very difficult time for you, um, but it, it is important to try and shed some light into this whole uh, situation. Uh, please introduce yourself so our viewers can know a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, my name is Hannah Collier. I have lived in Australia for 13 years. And my son, Hassan Jang, who is the deceased today, the one we are talking about here, joined me here in the 23rd of March, 2006, in Australia. Now we understand that Hassan came uh, from Sierra Leone, is that right? Came from Sierra Leone, west of Africa. Tell us a bit how Hassan developed. Uh... Hassan was a very loving boy when he first arrived here in Australia. I, Hannah Collier, who is talking to you here today, I did whatever it, I could. I fight till I bleed. I risk everything to give my son a better life. And then at some stage you started having some issues, uh, be behavior issues at home, is that right? Most migrants have faced issues you know, I faced my own issues when I moved to Australia here. Let alone a young child as he was, because he came here roughly about 12 years old. So he was totally a child. I was a single mother. It was very, very difficult to balance work and taking care of her son at the same time. Send him to one of the best schools that I can afford for him, where he started schooling. He was having tutors at home. He was loved unconditionally. There is nothing on earth that I can measure with this son of mine. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that can replace him. He's irreplaceable. But the unfortunate started. I usually drop in to the library. I think that's where he became. He got associated with maybe the wrong crowd. And that's where the battle began. At what age did he really start having uh, quite a lot of uh, issues with you at home? Uh, I will say at 13, about 13, 14 years old. Yeah, he started absconding from home, you know, hanging out. I've called the police to explain to them, you know, report it. And then the police will say, oh, no, he's just a young kid. Don't worry, just wait for 24 hours. If he doesn't come back, you know, and then we can have a look. But maybe he might come home. Maybe it's just a young kid just playing out there. And we understand at some stage you actually took him back to Africa. Is that correct? Please tell us why. I took him to Africa because I was sensing something that I think it will be beyond my control because as a single mother, I have to work as hard as I could to give him a better life. But it is hard for me to just leave him by himself when I'm off to work. When I sense this and, and you know, child protection involved, they said I was unable to care for my son, blah, blah, blah. You know, I took my son back home. I said, maybe this place is too much for him, he's young. I don't want to lose my son too soon. So it's better for him to go back home 
and grow up there. So by the time he's well matured to come back here, he'll be able to face all challenges and the situation here. Someone where rang Australian government and told them that I went and abandoned my son in Africa to a place where I never took my son to. I took my son to Sierra Leone, one of the best school in Sierra Leone called Limount College. That's where he had an admittance and was accepted. When did he come back to Australia? They brought him back here in Australia and then without letting me know that. And then I think they spoke to one of our community leader who they have their association with or relationship with. And then he accepted to house my son, to have him, like maybe being a foster parent for him. While I was still living here in Australia, I did not reject her to look after my one and only child. The person whom I've done, I've did all what I could. And up to today, that I'm talking here about him. I'm not happy. Because there is neglect there by the government. That's where they started failing me because I am the mother. I have started sensing something that I knew that it, was be, it would be beyond my control. And my hands are tied behind my back. But Australian governments think that, oh yes, we've got the power, we've got everything. Oh yes, we'll do our thing to our own, you know, we will make our own decision. And then they brought him here. When they brought him, they took me to court for my own son. The charges were neglection, abandonment and lack of food. I went to children's court with my son. Until when proper evidences came from back home and then they sent a detective, private, uh, you know, this under what have you police, went to my home and saw where he was living with me. I think that's when the story all changes. And then the magistrate by then, who was handling the case, whose name I can't remember anymore, asked for a psychiatric doctor for my son and said, I think my son needs to be in a juvenile detention center for some time because something is not quite right with my son. Because if he has all these privileges, what is going on? So that's where it all started. Now, fast forward to when he started having contact with the justice system. Can you tell us what happened and how it all started? Well, with their claim with neglection and abandonment, uh, abandonment of my son, started moving my child from one foster home to another, from one foster home to another. This one of most of this foster home that my son went to, he will run away from that foster home and come back to me or ask me Sorry. and called me as a mother. Can you please come and take me out of here? I'm dying. And one of the foster home that I still remember today around Springville that they took him to, to one of the uh, Islanders family. He was beaten by their son. I would have to drove down there that night when he gave me the address and pick him up. Now, after that court case, uh, why was Hassan sent back to foster care? Even though from what you're saying, it looks like you were able to demonstrate to the court that uh, there was no negligence from your part. Well, for reason best known to them, I don't know. It is difficult for me to understand or piece or put things together. Just at this moment, my head is really, even just things are just playing. My, my brain is just playing things just like a waves or like an ECG. How, how, you know, when they put an ECG into you, how your heart just goes with traces. That's what is happening in my head. Because since that time, I know that. If I don't stand strong, 
I think I'll have the worst later. But as a single woman, alone by myself, one man cannot fight a dozen all by himself. It was difficult for me. Until later when my son decided to come back to me. And the Sierra Leonean leader who they took my son to, later, spoke to me and then we had a very good relationship and asked my son if he is happy to be with him. I went and enrolled him even into a school around that area. Every weekend I'll visit. Sometimes I'll go there three times a week. I'll take food or whatever it takes. I was part of his life since. So I was not that mother who was like, oh, she's a smoker, she was a drunker, she doesn't sleep at home, she's just chasing men to men from one place to another. This is why his son was so distressed. That's why he just don't want to be with her. No, that is not the case at all. As I said, I risk everything and fight till I bleed. If that's what it takes to give the best to my son, who is really sad for me at this moment to talk about this. Why Australia? Is this what I deserve at this time? I did what I could as a mother for such a thing not to occur. But the government said, no, we have our own way. We have our own will and we will do it in our own way. We have the power. You don't have the power. And I believe a mother understands their son or their children more than anyone else. Because the first person to teach a child is the mother. The mother who is the, is the first person who will thought a child what words to say, what word to learn. And the first word, you see a child will start saying mama than even papa. I have worked relentlessly to give him a better life. If I'm living around Amadol today, Amadol is quite expensive to live, especially let alone a black woman like me living in Amadol. This is all because of my son. I choose to live around this area so that maybe he can see life differently. But you know, when the government is saying this and you the parents are trying to say that, look at all what is happening with black people today. Even if the parents are there, to do whatever it takes, because we understand our kids. It's not their kids. These are some of the reasons why they should allow us to do whatever it takes. We know how to discipline our kids. They can't discipline our kids for us. Not at all. Complete system fail here for me. Complete system fail. I'm really shattered at the moment. Ms. Collier, do you think that uh, the government has failed you in this situation? Oh my God. I think maybe the story of my son, I think, has given me so many things to think about whether to become a legal, to work for a legal aid person or to be part of it, to even study law and ethics because there is completely neglection, system failed here. It's only the prime fine print the government is looking at. They don't investigate. It's just like when they say, oh, black people, they don't know the difference. They don't understand. For me as a black woman, an African, who they think should be out there doing the worst things in life because it's only the worst things that Africans are doing, that's only what sits on the media. The good things about Africans, no, they don't show that. I came to Australia as a refugee, which I'm grateful for. But unfortunately, at this time, as I'm sitting here today, I wish I shouldn't have found myself here. Because what I should have enjoyed with my son has been taken away from me by Australian government. 
I started with my son. They involved, took my son away from me, that I'm a bad mother. So this is where all it started between me and my son. Because what he wished to do, I was against that. But the government is here to support him for what he wants to do. When I was looking at it, no, 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 boy. These are not the things. This is not the way. This is the way. I said, look at me. Take me as your role model. I work at the Alfred Emergency Department. I am not an expert, but I've made a lot of difference in people's life. And do you know what type of assault was it that Hassan was uh, uh, incarcerated for? Hassan has an assault. Well, the thing is, he had some few issues which were all assault-related issues. That's what he was sent to prison for. He was given a chance. He was bailed. And I have been with him since 2014, since all throughout the pathway, up to the... 13th of November, I went to court with him because I am his only representative. Did he have a lawyer? Legal aid. This is beyond my imagination. I am confused, as I said. I've been trying to put thoughts together. Like, why? Because when they arrested him for this assault matter, they took him to the Spence Street um, Prison. The map, I think. Yeah, on Spencer Street. That's where he was. To my surprise, he rang me, I think, sep around September, and says that I've been moved. So when he was moved, he has to wait until all information has been updated in the system, and that's when he can make contact with me and then to book an appointment for me to go and see him. I went there, I've been visiting. Now, was there any contact between you and either Hassan's lawyer or uh, uh, Correction Victoria or anybody before he was moved to the maximum security prison? Nothing at all. There was nothing. Only when I go to court, legal aid has never called me to sit with them one-on-one -on -one and to talk anything about my son. Never, ever. When I ask, he says no. That's what you told me. No legal aid person has ever visited him there. So why are you here? What are you doing in Port Phillip prison when you have not been sentenced yet? Why should you be here instead of being in a remand waiting to be sentenced? This is my question. And for someone who has an assault issue, he's not in prison because of drugs, He's not in prison because of theft. He's not in prison because he raped. He's not in prison because he killed. And then sent him to be among people who have killed, who have drug addicts. And even the person that he was living with in the same room where he passed away. He was there. He was sentenced because of drugs. My son was not there because of drugs. It was an assault for his own car. Now, I understand Hassan was probably incarcerated prior to his last case, but what was the thing that led him to being in incarcerated uh, before he was murdered? That incident, when my son um, got bailed, you know, came to my apartment here, that's his room in there. And then I had him asking this person about his car and all the car. When he was arrested, he was not the one who was driving because his license was suspended. The person that he was with in the car, I don't know. But he told me he was an African. Where he, the person came from, what side of Africa, I don't know. And then I had the conversation, and then I said, be careful. And I think the next day, that's when he went to speak to this person about his car, to pick his car back. What happened there? I really don't know because I was not there. I wouldn't be able to testify about that. To my understanding, because being in court, the brief explanation that the magistrate gave, that's what I picked that he went to the house to ask for his car 
and fighting broke up. As per them, they stated that he went with someone. So it was a planned attack by my son to the person who owned his car. And the person claimed, told him that his car was impounded by the police. But with all investigation, there is nowhere in Victoria where normally the police, when they impound cars, where it is. They couldn't find it anywhere. And is it your belief that uh, the government or the system rather has contributed to uh, Hassan being murdered inside that prison? He was living in a high maximum security prison. So what went wrong? What went wrong? What really went wrong here without being sentenced yet? Why should he be there? What has he shown that he's a threat to humanity? Even the person who assaulted the police, they gave him a slap of 200 um, hours of community work. Did you try to bail him out? When I tried to bail him, they said, oh, he's a risk to humanity because he attacked the guy so badly, he used metal and whatever to, 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 to attack this person. But he never died. But now, you took my son away from me, put him in prison, a high maximum prison, and now he's gone. He never had his chance of life to give him that chance. A 23-year-old, someone who moved to Australia at the age 12, I believe the whole community and anyone who is connected to me know what I did for my son. I wanted the best for him because he's my one and only child. I work relentlessly to give my son the best life. So what happened? If you have got the security, you've seized my son's freedom and then locked him up in a jail. So where were their cameras? Where were the security when I am visiting my son? You will see even they will nearly strip up my hair apart and telling me to lift everything up. And if you've got all this tight security for me, what went wrong? Where is my son? And you, the media today, you are out there telling people, giving them the wrong information. No one has had the guts to come and speak to me. He has got a mother. So I need an answer. Australia government has to give me an answer. I am not here because of money. I know nothing on earth will ever replace my son. But I want to know why he was in prison without being sentenced. Why should he be kept in a high maximum prison when he's not a threat to anyone? He has never had a brace to say he's been monitored. I know that in prison, why will you put two people who know each other together in the same prison and in the same cell? Because that, that, that shouldn't happen at all. And the person he was living in, if he was living in the same cell with, they know each other from outside. And he has been sentenced for 16 good years because of drugs. So don't you think that it was a risk for my son to associate himself with someone who was dealing with drugs? What happened with the system? Oh, because they are two, they are black, so they should put them together? Because they've got their own thing they are looking for? Who do you think is behind this? Who do you think killed Hassan? Well, I would say for me, I think Australian government. That's where I will put it. Because from day one, with all their involvement, in my son's life has been negative, nothing positive has come out of it. I'll say, well, it's Australian government who wants my son dead. Because if they would have allowed me as a mother to nurture my son as much as I could, they em enjoy, eh, gave, me, gave me the opportunity to do what I could as a mother. I don't think I should be here today. Now, depending on the uh, outcome of the investigation, do you intend to pursue a case against uh, the government? Oh, that's, 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 that, that's another issue. For now, I'm quite devastated. Where is the system? With all the expertise that they've got, if it was a terror-related issue by now, oh, 
It's everywhere. So why now, up till now, there's no answer? And even the policeman who came here to break this news to me, you came, I'm alone, living here alone by myself. When he came, not even to walk me inside the house and sat me down as a mother and try to spill this bean and see how I will gather this peace. Is that right there in front of the door? That's where it is. I am looking for her Nicole here. Because I was quite astonished. I've got so much health issues that I've been battling. It's a heavy load on me. It's a battle that I can't fight alone by myself. That is why I'll stand till I see the last, last sorry to say, last drop of blood for my son. It should be an example and a wake-up call to Australian government. You took my son away from me alive and locked him up in a custody. Even if my son has been condemned waiting to be killed, he still should be protected. West Africans, we don't know how to make gangs. Boys will be gathered making fun, you know, jumping up and there, have party, make fun. But never you will hear anything about Sierra Leonean, Liberians. West Africans, no, we are different. We try to make use of any little opportunity that we have in establishing ourselves to pursue the highest. You took my son alive. You said because he involved in an assault case. That person today is alive, moving around, doing his own thing. And I am alone here grieving. So what happened? What went wrong? And then you said he, he was in a high maximum prison. Where's the protection? I need an answer. And I need justice for my son. Black life matters. It's not going to be swept under the carpet. If it cost me for even Australian government to take me back home, I'm happy. But I will leave something in Australia that will ever remain to remember that, yes, I think we did the wrong thing. This is a system fail, and we have to fix things here. I know I'm not the first, but maybe I'll be the last person for such a thing to occur to. What message have we got uh, to everyone in relation to this case, including, by the way, uh, Hassan's uh, widow. We saw a woman on Channel 9 uh, talking about uh, um, Hassan's death and uh, saying that she had uh, apparently three children with uh, Hassan. This is a message to both government, police, media, or whatever. Because now, this is a case. Everyone eyes, the whole world, everyone eyes is open because it's everywhere. U.S., Canada, you know, Netherlands, everywhere. It's out there. They know about it. The woman who went on the TV and saying what she wants to say because maybe she's looking for attention, I'm telling the, everyone who has watched that, especially Channel 9, who went and interviewed that person to say whatever message they've got from that lady called Agnes, they've got the wrong message. This is coming from the mother. Everything she said is wrong. I think if I could mention someone here who has been in my son's life, it's a lady called Fatumata. That's the person I will mention. And with kids, I'll mention maybe, to my understanding, kids that are in Adelaide. So for him go, saying she has got three kids, I think she has got a lot of explanation to do, not only to me, to Australian government as well. Because she told Australian government that she doesn't know who the kids' fathers were. She doesn't know. And she was claiming centralic benefits. So why was she going? My son has never got married. Why will my son got married? I don't know about that. Where did she come from being a widow? So I really need an answer. That's my last message to Australia, to the whole community or anywhere. I need an answer. And justice must be served. Thank you very much. Okay, Ms. Hannah Collier, thank you very much uh, for your time to Africa Mid-Australia. Uh, we um, 
empathize with you. We obviously understand you're in a very difficult situation, but you managed to take the time to talk to us and we will continue to follow this case and uh, enlighten the community with regards to uh, this uh, hideous murder that has led to the loss of uh, your son.